Well, fishing freaks, welcome on back to the channel. I am currently standing where the silver bullet normally is. That's right, it was time for her to go back in the stable over at Fun and Son. And getting a new fiberglass bass boat is TBD, ladies and gentlemen. So even if I order a new boat right now, it's still gonna take quite a while for it to come in. So as of right now, we're rocking the crispy. And we also got LFD's boat, which I will show you guys in just a minute that we're gonna be putting some new eyeballs on. Let me show you the new setup on the crispy. It's pretty slick. I'm a tad bit bummed about not having the silver bullet, but I'm pretty stoked about this, y'all. I wanted to share this whole setup with you guys because I know not everybody has a brand new bass boat with you know latest and greatest and all that. And this is something that can go on just about any multi-species boat and you can take it with you um, you can just detach it, fish with it uh, on a pole. It's kind of cool. But the way I have it set up here is, is really nice for this boat. So this whole thing is, is nailed down with a 24 inch stainless steel track. This one's made by Burt's and this thing is solid. I got some stainless steel hardware, screwed it into uh, to the floor of the crispy and I've got it so where I can turn it all the way around on this 360 mount. And I already showed you guys this shuttle. This is the Summit Fishing Equipment shuttle. But I didn't show you guys the arm, uh, how this arm really works. So what's cool about being in the John boat right here is I can just swivel this thing out. Wah-bam! And now we're scoping. I can drop this thing down and we're in the water. Lift it up and we're going back in and it stows really nicely and it's very, very solid. And when I was actually fishing with this thing, realized that the power doesn't last very long. The battery I have on it right now is not that great. It needs a, a, a better internal battery. And there's companies that make those that will power these for longer. But I figured out a hack and I'm running two transducers on this one. So I'm running the live scope here I'm running the uh, transducer in the back. You know, it's the GL, GLS-10 is running. So what I did that's a little different in the wiring is instead of using uh, this USB hub right here for uh, basically wiring up, you know, other, other things that I want to charge and whatnot, I used uh, an extra port that was in there to power up the black box. So when I don't want to use the live scope, I don't have to turn that on. It's got a separate power switch right here. I can turn that on when I want to live scope, turn it off so I'm not using as much power from the black box. But even then, we're going to be sucking some power, so I figured out a hack. This is the hack right here. Portable power station. This one hap happens to be a, a Jackery. It's a small one that doesn't, you know, these are light because they're lithium. So what I did was I got a... SAE connector to a DC cigarette lighter plug. All I gotta do is plug that in there. This has its own fuse as well. Plug this into the charging port, the SAE charging port right here. I power that on and then this baby is pumping out juice all day long. And I've run this thing for hours. It, it, everything appears to be working and it's not overloading the system. We're not blowing fuses. So it's running power to the battery that's in here. And that small little battery is continuing to power up the unit and the transducers. So if I was gonna go on, let's say a three day crappie excursion, I could just take this with me and I doubt I would even have to recharge the power station. It's got enough juice to power me through multiple days of fishing with everything on. So there may be some of you that are remotely fishing, ice fishing, let's say, that maybe you can't recharge uh, the battery that's inside of that shuttle every night. So if you got one of these uh, and you're looking for extra power, these things, lithium, they do well in cold weather and you can just power that baby on, put it in your fish shack, back of your mobile, whatever. I'm gonna put it in my boat and keep dangling, keep keep it going. So, and it's also nice, it fits in this, this bag really well. 
I can keep my extra cords, cables in that bag. So really like this whole this whole system right here. And it is uh, it is working quite nicely. We just need to take it out on the water to catch fish, that's all. But we're gonna head over to LFDs and he has got one of these systems as well. He ended up getting one of these uh, one of these poles from Shields. Shields had them. So he's got his system ready to go. We're just gonna install it, get him hooked up on the scope game. LFD's rig. He has been lacking the electronics. It's been bugging him all fall, winter. He decided to step it up. We basically bought graphs at the same time. And in fact, I bought, um, I bought one Garmin unit. I brought one of the 10 inch units and he got two of the nines and I swapped out uh, the 10 for one of his nines because I really didn't need that big of one. I mean, would have been nice on the crispy, but my dad, older, needs a, bigger, needs a little bit bigger screen. And so um, I traded the bigger one out and, and took the smaller one. Uh, I actually got sent two of those units from Summit Fishing Equipment. And it was uh, after evaluating how big of a pain uh, it would be to rewire the center console style boat. It's a nightmare, guys. Um, basically having to run wires from inside the hole, go all the way down and somehow route those, snake those all the way back. And uh, the, the old center console, it's just, it's a different, it's a different animal. So instead of, um, instead of having to run all those wires up here somehow, we decided just to, just to use one of these up front, which is its own battery pack and everything. So the setup you saw on the crispy uh, that that has the rail and everything. That's what we're gonna do with dad's boat right here. It looks like uh, LFD had an unfortunate tree Expire look at that big monster oak I've counted the rings on this tree. It's it's just about a hundred years old The tree has seen some days out here LFD You ready you ready to get scoping? Front gets here. Drill a hole in your boat, Dad. Okay. I trust you. Your boat's definitely tougher than mine. A little bit more metal to get through. The Express. Come on, baby. Taking those waves on Lake Michigan. She's got a solid. Yes. Yes, those two locked in there. Okay. Show the folks at home how that works. So we got our plate. Slides right in like butter. Lock it down. That'll actually be able to rotate for you. Thing's pretty heavy, so it needs a needs a good lockdown. Yep. Slide it back. Well, like this, you can lock it. You got the little uh, hole yeah. right here. You can put a. Put a little carabiner thing in there, lock her in. I love it. Pretty sweet, huh? Yes. I'm going to sit my tail right here <laughs> and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. We got the unit hooked up. Scope pole hooked up. Back arm on working there's just one little thing that is missing and that is the connection cable from the uh, gls 10 going to the unit here and i can't remember i don't know what happened to it it might have gotten thrown away 
It might be somewhere at my house. It, it might be in the trash. Somewheres. But pretty important cable, and we'll, we'll have to find it. You're about ready to go scoping, Father. Yes! Raise the roof. All right, guys, cold front is coming in. Chickens know it. Inside of there, they got their heat lamp, so that's gonna keep them warm. I can already feel there's, there's quite a bit of warmth in there, so they should be toasty. This is my first time ever seeing this, but I'm pretty sure that white chicken right there, Peaches, she, weighs, she lays green eggs, or blue eggs, bluish green eggs. All these other ones here, these other two, they're brown eggers. But she has the Easter egger gene. And I think one of those is their mom. And uh, the Easter eggers, they have small little combs called pea combs. And usually when they have that, that means they're gonna lay some sort of blue green egg. See this comb up top? Big and floppy. This one? Short and stocky. Amy, do you want to help me get eggs? Sure, Dad. I love doing that. All right, let's go see what Peaches has. Ooh. Peaches just got out of the nesting box. Let's Ooh. go see. Yeah, let's go see. Do you think she was sitting on them? Mm, I think she was just laying one. Think she was broody? Yeah. I think she was broody. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, nope. She laid a new one. <gasps> How many eggs do we have in there? Wait, that one's like, why is that one that color? Why is that one that color? Because uh -huh. that one is called an olive egg. Is it olive color? Now we have an olive egger in the bunch. You're wondering what that red light is? Uh-huh. That, that's to keep them warm in there. Can I go get a closer look? You can get a closer look, sure. Five, six, yeah, we have six hens. And we got five eggs today. That's a, that's a record for the new year. So check it out. Ooh, they're all different colors. Oh. Oh, careful, Ben. Careful, Ben. Wow, thank you. Yeah, they are, they're all different colors. They're beautiful. Yeah, so the one that's the warmest that was just laid, that was Peach's egg. So I don't know which blue one it was, but she lays a blue egg. It's a white chicken that lays a blue egg. And this one right here, this little Osterlorp egger mix, she lays an olive egg. So I'm not sure what the uh, combination is to get an olive egg, but now we got them. Oh yeah, Colonel, I forgot to tell you, your hackles, your hackles worked out, buddy. We caught some fish on them. All right, Operation Winter Freeze slash Boat transitioning has taken place, is taking place. So in the back of the uh, meat wagon right now is actually a lot of my tackle from the Silver Bullet, crappie gear, on pad, ready to go. Everything's just, just so nicely, neatly organized. Love to see it. Top waters, won't be throwing those for a hot minute. Also got our 36 volt pro guide lithium out. And hopefully that is gonna be dropping into another boat. Fishing poles galore. I'm getting ready to give her a dangle and the magnificent Florida where I hope it is not, I hope that front does not reach down there where I'm going, but it could. And I'd like to know from you guys in the comments, if you would like to see less big fiberglass boat fishing this season and more of just kind of back to basics. It's just got me thinking about a bunch of ideas for fishing that are less, you know, offshore, going bass fishing offshore and things like that. Do some more land-based, do more shallow water stuff, which I think is uh, maybe what you guys want to see more. Thoroughly enjoy it and fishing out of a nice fiberglass bass boat is 
amazing. And that's not how I started out learning bass fishing. I started out from the bank and learning from uh, an aluminum boat and fishing a lot of shallow water first. And I feel like that's, that's really popular with uh, just about everywhere I go in the country. So what I wanna hear from you guys in the comments, uh, what you wanna see more of this season. And that'll help me kind of tailor the next boat for what you guys wanna see. But the Crispy Collector, it's always there. It's ready to go, it's ready to rip. So thank you guys for tuning in today. And I will be back here in Texas in about a week. We're gonna be doing some Big bass fishing very soon. Got some big bass trips coming up and crappie, baby. I can't wait to eat after those crappie. So thank you guys for tuning in. Happy dangling. Don't freeze out there. And I'll see you soon.